The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here, Tiger Technicians Hour, 877-927-6648. Love to hear from you. A lot of things to talk about this morning. Number one is, within the context of bar symmetry, and I spent some time on this in my overview uh, over the weekend, my video for my subscribers to my opening, oops, my opening call, uh, showing it, discussing it, showing that the inside track channels that we all, all support. But a lot of things are not falling into place for a low that is a really big tradable low. A short-term tradable low, yeah, absolutely, you could get that. But most importantly, what we're looking at here, and let me just go through this. Oh, this thing. I see that I'm a little slow today. I'm trying to remember, was it Dan? Oh, well, I, um, I had a... Um, an email someday when I, I have trade session. I had, uh, it doesn't happen often, but every once in a while when there's just incredible buying or short covering, whatever it is, at the open, uh, my platform goes a little slow. It doesn't happen that often. It never used to happen much at all, but now for some reason it's gone back to doing that. So if you had, you had sent me what to do, I thought I recalled it. I, I, I put your email aside. And now I put it in such a safe place I can't find it because it's not amongst all my papers. So I've gone through everything this morning. I thought I'd find it. Just uh, how to resolve that on TradeStation. It did work that time that you mentioned it to me. Um, so if you, I don't know if you're listening, but if you are listening, if you could send that to me. So it was a, I had to switch to uh, a particular mode. I think it was a uh, different speed. Anyway, so here we are. We're looking at 516 on the Dow. Huge big pop-up from that horrible action on Friday. But the Dow's action was not as bad as the other. It's still got this lower case. I'll show this in the, uh, in the market update. Let me show this again. So there's a pattern that I call the lowercase h goes to a lowercase m. Market comes down sharply. Rallies, fails at a peak A or a B. And then that's the first or second peak after the low. And it comes back and it retests that left side low. Well, the big thing is it could rally after that. But that rally has to form a cup formation by closing sharply above the arch high. And if it does that, you can go from a very negative dreaded H pattern, that's the lowercase h, into a very positive U pattern or a cup formation. So... If it stalls, you can go from a lowercase h to a lowercase m, just yet another arch formation to the right of the first one. Well, it's going to be really important by Tuesday or Wednesday that there is a close above 30,454. There wasn't one on the intraday high on Friday. But if there can be a close going towards the chap wave inside wedge, this green, I usually make it dash, but just so that you can see it better, I'm looking at a Tiger YouTube uh, yep, it's will be coming up in a moment. That I usually make dash line. I just I want you up there. It is. I want you just to see it very clearly. So that says, at least in the very short term, there should be a rally towards this trend line. If it's today, you can go to thirty thousand five hundred. If it's tomorrow, it goes a little bit higher, thirty thousand six hundred in the Dow. Um, not the futures. This has to be the cash. Made a lower low at 28,660, uh, just about 50 points off the, the low that was made back at the end of September. And now you want to see the cup for look, the MAGD is improving. The uh, stochastic is finally up in the 56 area. On balance, volume is having a terrible time. It's just flattening out. It's not, it's not, it isn't positive. But it isn't 100% negative because it is trying to make higher highs and higher lows. <laughs> so that's not great. But look, for the first time, and this is the reason why I said to subscribers, we're going back to the long position, because this is so important um, that the nine-period moving average right there, you see the little pink line in the daily chart, just underneath the black line, that's the nine-period under the 14. If that can close positive, then we finally have the momentum. We have the stochastic producing the torque 
and then the MACD and the nine period moving averages will continue with momentum. That's important. If you look at the month, the weekly chart, we went just above the Chapman Wave Inside Track propellant zone. Uh, for three sessions, we were in that area, in that 28,700, 28, 600 area. Now we popped up to the nine period moving average. Not good. Look how long it's going to take, how much it's going to take, and time and price to get the, the Dow to move sharply enough in the weekly chart for the pink nine period moving average to cross. The 14. So this is all a work in progress. It did it just very briefly in that big move up that went to that uh, high that was made in August at 34,281, right on the tr inside track repellent line. I mean, how these are technical aspects that are so consistent and so easy to do. I mean, you don't need any big software package. You just join the lines. So that's important. Now, we have gone to a leg C. I'm not going to talk about it today. Maybe I'll get to it Monday, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday about the monthly charts as we get closer and closer to the end of the month. But we're not there yet. We're only halfway into the month. So here we go. S&P did the same thing. Now, I'll do this on the S&P. I should have done it on the Dow, but I'll do it on the S&P. The low that was made back in – let me just drag this across. Look. I always talk about this bar symmetry to me is just absolutely it's a, a phenomenon that defies descript, it, 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 you can describe it, but it defies an explanation in a very commonsensical way. Why? Because I've always said that although a lot of people disagree saying we come down much sharper than we go up, I say no. Look at this. June the 17th. In the cash, S&P, 36.36.87 was the low. And then it took you X number of bars to get to 43.25.28, the high, two months later on the 16th of August. And look what happened when you came down. You came down in a slightly quicker time frame. But look at the pattern. The pattern didn't have this big crash red candle going to the low. It was just a steady move down. And on the, I think it was September the 30th. Yeah, September the 30th, you go to 584.13. So that means you were about six sessions early. So yes, it was a little quicker, but there wasn't a crash pattern. And then you had the sharp rally uh, to about the 3800 level. And then you took out the left side low in the dreaded H pattern. You went to the 3491.58 low on, we on Thursday, on Wednesday. Thursday, you had that spectacular. Now, that was on Thursday. Friday, you had a higher high, and then you pull back very sharply. And today, you back testing above the 14 period exponential moving average. All of this said to me that this pattern can now go to a cup formation. And the cup formation says, and I'm being a little uh, aggressive here, I should have moved. I'm going to do it the way it should be. I'm not going to go to this candle right here. I'm going to go to the little doji candle right there, right there. So that'll say from the left side high, around about the 3907s, I'm looking at dragging this across and getting to, uh, that's it, there we go. Getting there. Even that's a little too aggressive to my eye, but this might be a very surprised move to the upside. You've just washed out all, all, all the balls. So now we're going to the right side, and that drags me across. Oh, I can't even get there. And that says by, oh, that says by the end of the last day of October, we should be up in the 3820 area or higher. But 3907 is a positive. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back and there's a nice comeback in the market after just a brief pause and spectacular uh, rally that started actually last night. Uh, the, at the open the market, so the E-mini e dropped sharply and then it just started to move up higher and it's been doing that ever since. So we've got a peak D now on the one-minute chart, a leg E in the 10-minute uh, chart. But <clears throat> the most important thing I wanted to do, I, I should have started with that. I didn't want to. I just wanted to go through our formula that we're looking at. So there's a beautiful left side, right side price tie match uh, to this particular Low right here. Oh, I didn't. I did it in my other Dow chart. I forgot to change it. I had changed it some time ago. I wanted to be more conservative, and then I said, "Okay, let's just see what happens if I'm not as I'm not that aggressive." So let's go all the way to that low right there on the left side. There we go. And now we're gonna. That's green. And this will be pink because it's coming down. Same thing. Look at this. So we go to the right side, drag it across. There it is. And that goes to right there. Look at this. It goes to the low that was made at 269 on the QQQ at 269.28. Got taken out on the right there on the 30th of September at 26, uh, 267.10. Then it bounced and then went to a low low to 254.46. But look how it's holding so nicely above the Chapman Wave inside track uh, propellant zone. And now we can say there's a chance that you got yourself a cup formation. And if this rally persists into Wednesday, Thursday, I'm going to be a little aggressive here. But I'm going to say the trend line I'm looking at because I haven't been able to, I, I, I don't want to move the I want to, don't want to make any changes right now, but it should take you to the end of October. Uh, it says by the end of October, if the QQQ this week sometime takes out 278, that's another nine points higher, takes that out, then we're looking at the 284.18 left side high as being some kind of a target in October. All the time saying this particular instance says called 260 as, as key support in the QQQs. So what I was going to do at this particular moment is, and uh, 
Here we go, moving this to the left. That's the daily chart. Here's the weekly chart. Lowercase, just the arch formation reversing, becoming a cup formation. I love the way the sine wave works, in this case, in a diagonal uh, momentum, and it goes to arch formation, and now you're potentially at a trough D, trying to start another cup formation. And that'll succeed in being at least, an and not just this, we haven't even attempted it right now, because we haven't made a higher high than last week. But that'll become a great leg A, and certainly above the 286 level in the, this is the black 14 period exponential moving average, you'll start to get towards the major resistance, which will be out at this Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, and that goes all the way to 299. So, oh, I mean, we're talking numbers now that just sound out of sight. Of course, on the way down, we just did that in four weeks. But I'm talking about a steady move up, and one of the reasons why I'm talking about this is, look, the VIX index, I spent three weeks now talking about the VIX index. Actually, what I'm talking about three weeks is it's over five weeks, saying if we get back into this inside track, declining repellent zone in the weekly chart of the volatility index, it will be really important on a closing basis if we closed above that green trend line. And that's the outer limit of this declining trend line, which went from 37.79 back in, sorry, 38.94, January, uh, the week of the 28th of January, 37.79, the week of February, the 25th, and, and a beautiful, I mean, you couldn't draw it in more perfectly than this. And it went above it at 34.88, the week of September the 30th. The week after that, it was a Chapman Wave Roman candle, but we have not closed above it. Usually I say with a Roman candle, you got one session, the very next session, if it goes halfway into the wick, that very session should take it down to uh, the long-legged wick of the Roman candle, Chapman Wave Roman candle, uh, it should take out the left side low. But if it closes above that, you've turned the uh, closing price into a support level. But if it doesn't close above it, uh, be careful, because that same thing applies. And in this case, if at any point on a daily basis, there is a three-hour window where the VIX index is trading under 30 point, I'm going to be as accurate as I can, 30.30. .30. Just to be safe, let's say I prefer to see it under 30 in the 29s, but if it goes to 30.30, uh, .30, there's a chance it's probably going to go to the, the 29s. That's going to suggest very strongly, remember I'm looking at a weekly chart, that the Dow, this is based on the New York Stock Exchange. I don't, I don't, I don't get the New York Stock Exchange you know, on trade stations. Someone let me know if you can get it. I've called them up and they said I just they haven't been able to find it. Maybe the person or people I'm speaking to don't know it, but I, it just disappeared. Look, it used to be NYA.X, and I've got it right here, but it only goes to 2020. It goes to June, and that's it. I mean, all I need is a chart. I don't, that's all I need. But anyway, I don't have it. So if the VIX index starts to uh, decline, and today's going to be a test, if it holds very steady, it's at uh, this point, it's at 31.16. If it holds in the 31s, that's saying, hey, hey, we might be rallying, but there are a lot of people out there still thinking that they want a short. I don't know why, but, uh, you know, this is getting to a little hazardous to your health if you're and wealth if you keep shorting because there's a, there's a real good chance that we've got at least a short-term trend change going on here. All the, all the index, look at this. The MACD and Stochastic made higher lows on this recent pullback, and as exacting, it's acting exactly the way you'd expect. I didn't like the Friday action, but it wasn't as bad as, say, the QQQ. So yes, you got one index that was really looking very ugly at the close on Friday, but look at this nice give back. So you've got green and red. This is your sandwich effect that I like to look at, how a green candle is has a red candle in the middle and then has another green candle or oh, it's a red candle, then has a green, and then a red candle. I talk about that as a sandwich effect. It hasn't done it yet. We'll see what happens by the end of the day. Most importantly, the VIX index is saying that if the VIX index starts to make lower lows and lower highs, instead of having a big bounce, now it's a 31.14, right on the 14-period exponential moving average, which it's held since it broke above about uh, eight, seven sessions, eight sessions ago, 
So if it starts to go under it, what's this pattern? We've I've had webinars, I've had I discussed it, I've had sessions uh, again my, in this you know, again, target technicians hour uh, discussing this exact pattern. This is the inverse. This is like the dreaded H with a very big rectangle formation. And in the rectangle formation, the rule of thumb is if it starts like a flagpole, if, if it pulls back sharply and then starts to make higher highs and higher lows, there's a chance that it could go to a peak D in a shorter time frame. Now let's just have a look at that. Yes. In a shorter time frame, going just under right to or just above the PVSI, in this case 34.88. When we get back, I'll have notated the VIX index. Dow's up 553, S&P's up 95. Dow's up sharp and tight. Conditions hour, we'll do the VIX. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So this is what I'm looking at here. So on a 120-minute chart, we went to a PG in this big arch formation. And I like to go one step at a time. So the, the level to watch on the VIX index uh, sometime uh, it could be a little late, but let's just say, based on what I'm looking at here, the low that was made in the VIX and the 120 minute chart at 9.15 on the 7th of October was screamed up to that peak G at 11.15 on the 12th, and now is coming down. Should make in the next uh, couple of, uh, I'd say in the next few hours, I don't see how it can do that. <clears throat> but Yes, your support is at 30. It's trading at 31.10. Uh, just to get from the 31.97 level has taken a big, big move up in the in the market uh, to do that. And the day is young. 
and he's still got to get a couple of sell-offs, just mini sell-offs in the meantime. So he just says to me, this is a little, this is a little aggressive. So normally what I would do is I'd go to that level, but I'm going to be a little bit more conservative. I'm going to draw this in right now. These are all Chapman Wave techniques that I discuss in my uh, webinars that I've done are there. If you're a subscriber, if you uh, would like to subscribe, hours and hours and hours of, of webinars. And what I'm looking at here is that this is a technique that I would use just as what I do all the time. And I, I pull it to the right and it says, and make it pink because that's on the way down. And it says, if you're looking at this as an indicator, it says buy <clears throat> the seven seven fifteen on the twenty uh, on the eighteenth. That's to buy tomorrow morning. There could be a test of this low right here. Let's go one step at a time. First is thirty point twenty nine, and the next is uh, twenty nine point eighty eight. Gee, I don't know if that's going to that looks still looks aggressive to me, but that's what I do. And you're making lower lows and lower highs, basically. And that just says, yep, there's a good chance that this is an accurate way of looking at it. My plumb line, that's this midpoint, is right there at PG. Look at the difference between that high where the technicals were, were very good and then it goes to a higher high with weaker technicals. But until that nine-period moving average moved underneath the 14, you didn't have a confirmation of the rollover. Now you've got it. And in the daily chart, you can see we went to a peak D. That's your flagpole, sharp pullback, holds at about the 2820 area, and then runs all the way back, not to 3488, but to 34, I think it was 43 or something, 3453. 50, and uh, so just underneath that previous high, look, the technicals here were much weaker than they were there. And now we're going from the cup formation. Remember, all the time markets are just doing one thing. They are, you know, they are following the three patterns that I talk about all the time. Straight line, cup, or arch. So the sine wave has gone from a cup to an arch, and now we're looking at the reversal. So we'll see. Day is very young. We've just made an hour, or an hour and a few minutes, into the first part of the, of the week, Monday. And the day is not just young. It is very very, very young. So let's do that. So to me, this is a major, major signal to say between the VIX index and the dollar, which is now down a little bit, it's down 0.84 at 112.47. So this, this is starting to have, remember I talked about these red, green, red uh, bars, big bars. I like to look at that as a sandwich. The sandwich effect here says that this dreaded H pattern at a peak A with that peak B, peak D at 114.75 in the dollar index, suggests that any close in the next couple of days below 100, 112 is really important. But let's say 111.83 uh, would say, would say, hey, there's a really good chance that you're making an arch formation. Doesn't say you have to crash and break under 110, 21 or so, but it does say you could be pulling back, and that's going to help the market. Look what it's done. Gold is up. 19.3, good move, green big green candle, but gold is under other stresses, other other areas, and often when markets are coming back, any money that's been made in other areas, like in gold, gets sold. It just that's the way it is. So for gold to really, <coughs> excuse me, for gold to have a, a move to the upside that says, I've changed my trend, you'd basically have to see a trading for a good few days above this high, and that's really high. That's 17, uh, what is it, 38? Yeah, 1738.7 in the continuous contract. And it's now, at, so that's 17, yeah, it's a 16, let's call it 1670. I mean, it hasn't even broken above the nine or 14 period moving averages. A lot of work needs to be done. Let's look at silver. Uh, silver, an inside day so far from the ugly candle on Friday. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, it's also struggling. EUR, USD, euro dollar currency pair, a nice green candle, green candle on Thursday, red candle on Friday, green candle today. I'm watching this closely because at 0.980, if the 
euro dollar starts to trading above 99.99 at any point this week, that's a big deal. And it should do it after all. Look how long it's been with the, with the negative. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Since the nine period crossed under the 14 back in the week of the 25th of June 2021, not once in the weekly chart has the nine period moving average gone green. Even now, look how wide it is. So this is a very important moment because if the dollar is going to pull back sharply rather than just have a little bit of a, a kind of a consolidation, you would expect... <coughs> You'd expect that the uh, euro would go much higher. USDJPY, look at this, made a peak. I, 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 I went through this over the weekend. I really can't count this anything else than a peak C in the daily. Leg F in the E in the weekly, leg E in the weekly. And you remember I was looking at this after that peak F back in, I think it was July. I said if you do the left, if you do the vertical test, the stochastic's flat above 80. It's at 83%, I think I said. That's still a big positive. So I can't say that there's a vertical negativity, the vertical positivity, and the 9 is still way above the 14. So that is just telling us that the yen, dollar-yen currency pair is still acting. In fact, it's even looking a little better than the dollar right now. Isn't that amazing? So here's the dollar. Look at the, Here's the dollar. Look at the left side chart stalling and here's the uh yen usd jpy there we go what a difference and the other day i said wait a minute the euro so the dolly this is the dolly japanese yen currency pair had this huge candle it tells you you're trapped and you were trapped for over two weeks almost three weeks and then it broke out and what my reasoning with this particular candle is that if there is a close above the wick high, then it makes the entire body of the candle good support. If it goes underneath and closes underneath, it means that any rally above, uh, wait a minute, any, any slide underneath makes this body extremely strong resistance. Well, it's just walked the nine period moving, not even the 14. It's walked since it broke above back in August, around about the 23rd or so. He has walked the nine period moving average in the daily, the weekly, and the monthly charts. The uh, 120 minute ch chart says it could be stalling a little bit here, and we'll see what happens. I'll be back. Dow's up uh, 542, SP's 96. We'll look at the um, GE. We'll look at GE as soon as we return. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So General Electric uh, aircraft engines and other areas um, fits the category that I was looking at uh, for subscribers the other day and actually what I mentioned here in the show that it's surprising to me and it's quite uh, significant that General Electric and of course this is uh, reverse split so it was trading the sixes and the fives and now it's trading a 69 it actually hit uh, it went over 100 after the split uh, this is very important because the last high at peak F under the 200 period moving average saw its slump from about 81 to 61, 20 points. I mean, that's a third. It's a, that, just that move alone. So this move up in leg B, a gap up today with the nine period moving average finally turning up is a good sign for a couple of reasons. You've got your dreaded H right here. It's not a dreaded H, it's just a plain old H formation having successfully held the 50, uh, call it 56 low that was made back in July-ish. Um, and then it ran all the way to 80 and then it pulled back. So now this left side low is higher than the previous low. That's a good sign. Uh, the monthly chart doesn't look good, but the weekly chart is improving because it's got this pattern that says this is exactly the pattern that has the just the potential. It doesn't say it's going to do it, but it has the potential to form I'll just draw this in so you can see it. An H pattern that's successful and then to holds and then turns around and makes a very uh, a very strong cup formation. But that means nothing until you see the significant closes above the high that was made. And that was the week of the 19th of August of 81.30. I would say 83. Once you get to the 83 level, that says, you know what? All this stuff now, uh, you're probably not going to immediately test the lows. You're going to try to test something on the left side, an ugly candle, a moving average, a gap, a doji candle. Well, look at this ugly, ugly candle of the week of the 29th of April. 90, round number high, 74.35 low. 16, I mean, this is 16 point. That's that's a lot in just one week. So that says general neck. Now, I'm putting it only, I'm only putting it together. I'm not saying, oh, fantastic, look at this. I'm saying it was very constructive in looking at this together with, say, a caterpillar, which went from, well, it's already gone from 246 back in June 2021 all the way down to the 160s. But it's gone from the 160 low of September to a peak D at 185, and now it's at 180. So why is caterpillar acting just in the short term? I'm only talking short term, acting so well. Why is Alcoa? Same thing. Coming off of a low, once upon a time was up in the 98 area, uh, plummets down to uh, a few weeks ago in September, it goes to the 33, 34 range, and then bounces to 40, and now it's at 40.20. So there are some signs to say that more serious is buying is coming in, and it might be very selective, but it's just fascinating how it's coming in. You're not, not really seeing it in, in uh, U.S. Steel. Let's look at the SLX, the steel ETF. Uh, not bad, not bad at all. It's got that H pattern in the weekly chart. It's done a couple of fib um, uh, declines. 
I don't have, I had this, it's, oh, I had it in USD. I wonder if I've still got it. Gator gave me some real nice things to look at. No, I don't have it. I, it's pretty about that. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying there are some signs that some buying is coming in. Now I'll talk about some buying. Let's go to the XLF. This is the financials. Yeah, a lot of work needs to be done. But that was a spectacular move going from 29.59 to over 32 in just two sessions. Now it has to hold it. And for this to become a really significant rally, significant meaning the financials, the s and Select Financial Spider Fund, I want to see it participating in any general market rally or even specific market rally right now. Otherwise, it's the same to me. This is very, very selective. And I'm putting that together with the IAI, which is the broker-dealer ETF, which is really struggling up nicely today. But look what happened to Schwab. Uh, and it wasn't earnings. I don't know what. Oh, even today, look at this red candle made a peak D. And I spoke about this that it made a double top at 77.41 on August the 14th. And a peak E comes down very sharply to just under 70, rallies to peak A, B, C, and even goes to a D. And at this D, back on October the 7th or something, whatever that day was, that's probably a Sunday, the 6th. On the 6th, it turns around, makes a D. Under the previous high, and look at the technicals, much, much weaker. So I don't know what the story is because I think the earnings come out. It's still got a, a, a little while to go before the earnings come out. So Schwab is just saying, wow, this is not – if I don't get the broker-dealers moving together with the financials, together with the QQQ, the Index 100, together with the Dow and the S&P – then I'm missing very important factors. So yes, it's okay to see some of the cyclicals like the GE, like a Caterpillar, like Alcoa, coming off the bottom and acting not badly, but I need to see a lot more. I mean, for instance, the speed with which we've had and what I've said to subscribers just for the moment, I'm trying to avoid single, just did individual stocks. I'm trying to go for, we have got an individual stock. We've got, um, um, we're along a bank stock. It's doing fantastic. It's up 5% today alone from where we got it to late Thursday afternoon. Um, but that's an individual case. But mostly I'm saying I'm trying to avoid the specific stocks just for this particular phase. Maybe in a day or two I'll feel more comfortable because I, I'd rather be generic and go with the sector because individual stocks. Look at this. Look what it was acting so fantastically. We're out of it for a while now. CF Industries, CF Industries Holdings, hydrogen, nitrogen, products for clean energy, fertilizer, emissions, abatement. I mean, you name it. This is the, this is the sexy stuff of the, of the media, right? Look what happened on Friday. It goes from 108, bam, down to 98. And today it's only up $1.92 and 99.6. Question came in, what about Moz? Uh, that's Mosaic, the Mosaic Company. Phos uh, potash phosphates fertilizers peak D in the monthly chart is 71.30, peak D in the daily at about 63 and 70. Hey, 70. What was that? That was in the weekly. Oh, wait a minute. That's even higher. That can't be right. No, no, no. I'm wrong. Oh, 71. Let me just get this right. The high that was made in May was 68. Now, how can that be? 68. No, that doesn't make sense. 79.28. There you are, 79.28. And the, the, the level that we were looking at for a long time was way back there, left side, right side price time match. Look at this. You're going to 2011, February at 89.74. It pulls back. I did this measurement right here, and it went there to the exact month. The exact month to the 74 level, but the 70, the 89, 74 area that was missed because it went to 70. What did I say? It was 79 something. I'll just make it 79 for now. Yeah, nice technique, huh? Uh, we were uh, we were not long uh, mosaic at all, but I was giving uh, some uh, technical questions. As I'm looking at it right now. This whole area 
has been really taken down. I'm not saying I, I, I don't know. Whoops, let me just move that back again. I'll move the whole thing instead. Yeah, so this is something very important because it's saying to us that the phosphates are under pressure and they're going to be under pressure for a little bit longer. I'll be back waiting for some kind of a pullback in the Dow to get some particular position. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So one of the real things that I said to subscribers is today is that I do not want to add to certain positions or, or get new positions after 1040 this morning. And one of the reasons is you have to always look at the characteristic of the market. What's the characteristic of the market? For a while now, it's been to have a big sell-off in the afternoon. It could be earlier, but usually if it holds, you, don't, you can't tell that the last hour is going to be great with a wonderful close. Yes, it was Thursday. It was a, a four-in-one day. I don't want to go through that again. It was actually a five-in-one day. So I am looking at this, and a question came in. Advisor shares, Dorsey... Um, Short, I didn't know what it was, and I'm looking at this and I'm saying, wait a minute, if this is long, and it's like uh, uh, advisors at this particular point, you can't even get appointments for advisors, they're so busy because everybody's worried about their portfolio. This should be moving up, but it's moving down. Then I see it's an advisor shares Dorsey Short, Dorsey Wright, I'm sure, um, W R I G H T, not necessarily R I G H T. And um, yeah, so we, we've, we're going to be watching this closely. Same thing with the VIX, because if the VIX doesn't come down today, but holds very steadily to the upside, oh, I typed in the wrong place. It says that that's a problem. 
So watch this very closely. I'll do this because a question came in about um, Amazon. Yeah, Amazon's trying to form some kind of a bottom here. I'll have to be able. I'll, I'll have to look at it tomorrow and Wednesday to see whether or not I said that you could start a position uh, the other day, but you needed a tight stop, so you probably were taken out with a very tight stop. But I'm looking at it because what happens with Amazon and the retail sector? We'll do that tomorrow in detail. But right now, at, at 31.28 in the VIX index, if in the afternoon, going towards the last hour and, and 10 minutes, so from 10 minutes to three to four o'clock, if the VIX index is able to go into the 30, what was the low today, 30.90, if it takes out that 30.90 and it goes to about 30.60, That'll be your first sign to say, make this time we don't have a big sell-off in today. So have a wonderful day. This is a work in progress. Stay tuned for Steve Rose and all the great programming. Yeah, check out my opening call.